Okay, hello, good morning. I know some of you doesn't know me because I only handle one and two, room one and two, right? So for those who doesn't know me, I am teacher Shane. I am teaching room one and room two. So those who are in room one and room two, they know already me. But for those other rooms, hello everyone. So I'll be your mathematics teacher for today and for maybe tomorrow also. So I know your teacher is teacher Mel and teacher Joe. So let's have, let's start our lesson. Okay, so just for a while, I need to share my screen. Do you see my screen? Joshua, can you remember me? Who? Who are you? Tana Chot. Wow, 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 wow. Teacher, I'm from one. Okay. Um, do you see my screen? Yes or no? Do you see my screen? Can't see your no. No? Okay, for a while. Just let me see. <laughs> um, where is it? Is it not? Um, sorry, Mr. Excuse me, Mr. Excuse me. Um, I need to go back screen share. Ah, this one. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, only. Yes, far no, Video. Um, no video. Okay. Only this one. Okay. Okay, so for today, we are going to learn about ratio and proportion. Do you have any idea about ratio and proportion? About separating the parts yeah it's kind of separating of parts okay so let's have ratio and proportion let's start so it's not moving <laughs> Okay, so what do you need to know about um, ratio and proportion? We are going to define and illustrate the meaning of ratio and proportion using a concrete or pictorial models. So for you, in order to have more understanding about um, ratio and proportion, let's use some pictures. But later on, you don't need a picture, but only some words. Okay. Do you hear me? Can you see the screen? Okay, next. Okay, so I have here some sanitizers. Since it is COVID, we are, we are going to use the example sanitizer. So every sanitizer that I buy, so you can see there are four sanitizer, I will get... <laughs> I will get eight masks. Can you see that? I see someone is wearing mask, then it's shot. <laughs> All right, so now what is the ratio of the sanitizers to masks? Do you have any idea? So four to eight. Mm -hmm. Okay, now first let's define what is ratio. Ratio is a way of comparing two or more quantities. So we are talking here about comparing one one item and another item. So there are two quantities. That is the meaning of quantities. Or you could also have more. So let's have this one. So what is the uh, the ratio of the sanitizers to mass? You will see here, sanitizers to mass. Now, please remember the first word or the first item that is being mentioned. Okay, the first word that is mentioned there is sanitizer and two mask. So 
For word form, we can use A is to B. So you have four is to eight. Because the first for, uh, mention there is sanitizer. That means you have four sanitizers. And the second mention there is eight. So we have a mask. So we have eight. We also have the colon form. So if you can see the two dots, that is colon. That is what you call colon. Okay, so we have A is to B. You still read that as is to, the colon one. So you have four colon eight or four is to eight. Now we also have the fraction form for ratio. We have A over B. So we have four over eight. So that is how you're going to have it. You have the ratio for word form, col colon form, and fraction form. Okay, now I have here some ap apples and oranges. What do you think is the ratio of apples and orange? Two to five. Yeah, you can have two to five. Okay, now. Two over five. Yes, you can also have two over five. Now, I have here, please read the word, the ratio of the numbers of apples to the numbers of orange. Now, first, you have to look what is the first mention. Oh, yeah. Is it apples or oranges? Okay, so the first mention here is this is your wife. Okay, okay. Um, so, so the first mention here is apple that doesn't have to do with it. It's just a microphone. Can you hear me now? What happened to my phone? Okay. Can you hear me now? Uh, no. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me because you say so? No. <laughs> Hello. Okay. 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 Oh, okay. Okay. Share. All right. Okay. Let's continue. Okay. So next is we have here the ratio of the numbers of orange to the numbers of apples. Now the first mention there is oranges. So the first one you're going to write is the number of oranges, and the next one is the number of apples. So we have five is to two. All right, now let's proceed. Now you can see here the candies of David. David has seven candies. Peter has five candies or sweets. And for Mike, he has four candies, All right? Now, first is the ratio of Mike's sweet to Uh, to Peter Sweet. Okay, that is four is to five. Now, how about ratio of the David Sweets to Peter Sweets? What is it? That's David five. Is, huh? Sorry. It's David has seven and Peter has five. That is seven is to five. Okay, now how about if you have the ratio of David sweet to the sum of sweets, if you say the sum of sweets, that is the total of the three uh, mentioned names. So from David, David sweets plus Peter sweets plus Mike sweets. So we have seven plus uh, seven plus five plus four. Mister, what is this? Divide only. Okay. Coming in. Uh, okay. So we have there 7 is to 16. Okay. So the total of the candies are 16 and from David's candy is 7. So that is 7 is to 16. All right. Okay. Now let's proceed. Uh, let's go back to our first example, which is sanitizer and mask. 
Now, as you can see here, 4 is to 8, uh, 4 over 8, we could still simplify it, right? We could still lowest down, that down by um, dividing it to their common factor. Their common factor is 4, right? So 4, div 4 divided by 4 is 1 and 8 divided by 4 is 2. So the answer is 1 half. Okay, so we could say for a while, we could say that 4 over 8 is equal to 1 half. Yes, what is your question? Is it necessary to bring the ratio to be the simplest form? Um, nope, but I will explain it later why we have to do it in simplest form. Okay, just wait. <laughs> okay, so it's not necessary unless if your teacher will say that you need to simplify. So this one is like the literal one only. Like if, if what is the ratio of sanitizer, you only need to do is you're going to count the sanitizer and you're only going to count the mask. Understand? Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, so let's proceed. Okay, so the next one is we could also have it as an, a column four. So again, fraction, uh, there are a, a three um, forms for our ratio. You could have word form, you could also have the column form and the fraction form. So you can see therefore is to eight or the column one is equal to 1 is to 2. Again, please remember the first mention should be the first one to be written mm -hmm. and the second mention would be the second one. All right. Now, so when you have this one, you call it equivalent ratio. That is why I simplify it. So you will understand that there are some ratios that has equivalent ratio. So for our case, 4 is to 8, there is an equivalent ratio with, which is 1 is to 2. So that is the equivalent ratio of um, 4 is to 8. Actually, you could still have more of that. So what is equivalent ratio, by the way? So equivalent ratio, as you can see there, are ratios that make the same comparison of numbers. That means that if you're going to multiply it to another number or uh, the same number, then uh, it will still be equivalent. So let's have this example. You can see there a drink and a donut. You can see one drink and a donut. Okay, the ratio of the drink to donut is one is to two. As you can see, I write one is to two because the first mention is drink to donut. So the second mention is donuts. So we have one is to two or you can have the fraction form one half. Okay, now for one half, let's just say we're going to multiply it by two. That is two over four. Okay, so that is equivalent to one half. Okay, next we so we could say that one half is equivalent to two is to four, or one half is equivalent to two over four. You can see there at the screen. Okay, how about if we're going to multiply one half by three? So we have three is to six. Uh, or three over six. So we could say that one half, uh, one is to two is equivalent to two is to four and three is to six, or one half is equivalent to two is to four, uh, two over four equals three over six. Now, if we're going to simplify, let's go back to simplifying. If we're going to simplify that one by their common factor, so you will still get one half. So as you can see, we go back to the first one. Okay, the, the one that who, the student who asked me, do you understand now that it will still go back? It's still the same because they are equivalent. Okay, so let's proceed. So you call it equivalent fractions, uh, ratios. Now for equivalent ratios, it also says that it is the same as proportion. Okay, so ratio and proportion, that is our lesson for today. Now for proportion, okay, do you have any question about ratio before we proceed to proportion? No question. Yes, what is your question? No question? What is your question do you have?
Any question? You have? Okay, so let's proceed. Now, for proportion, it is a statement of equality between two ratios of fraction. Uh, for the first one ratio, we only have one, right? One ratio. For proportion, there are two ratios. Now, for two ratios, it should be proportionate. What do you mean by proportionate? They are equal. If we're going to solve it, they are equal. The two ratios are equal. Now, how are we going to know that they are equal to each other? I have here an example for the word form. We have two bags of popcorn of 10 people equals four bags for 40 people. Sorry, that is 40 people. What do you think is the um, proportion or the ratio of this? Let's have first two bags of popcorn of 10, of 10 people. What do you think is the ratio to that? Anyone answer? What do you think? Two bags of popcorn of 10 people. That is two is two, 10, okay? Equals four bags for 40 people. So that is four is two, 40. So this is how it looks like. You have two is two, 10 equals four is two, 40. Now, please, um, Notice that they are parallel. The first mention here is two bags. The other one is four bags. The next one is 10 people. The next, uh, the second one is 40 people. So bags, bags, people, people. So they are always parallel to each other. So you have two is to 10 equals four is, four is to 40. Okay, now next. Let's see if you are listening. We have four packages for $8.20 is equal to two packages for $4.10. Let's call uh, let's call the room room four number three. Room four number three. Who's room four number three? <laughs> Are you here? Um, excuse me, teacher. The yeah. numbered participants here are even numbers. Oh, even numbers. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so let's have room four, number 10. Room four, number 10. What do you think is the form of this? <laughs> uh, so we, we could check it. Mm -hmm. okay. What upon? Yes. What upon? Yes. Tell me what upon. Four packages for uh eight point twenty dollars is equal to two packages for uh four point ten dollars. How are you going to put that like into ratio proportion? Like okay. numbers only. How are you going to have it ratio? The four packages for 8.20. I know. Yes. Answer. What is your answer? It's. Number 40. So what is it? What is your answer? So that is 4 is to 8.20. Oh, that's just the answer. <laughs> no need to think. We are just going to translate it into column form or the word form. Okay. Next. Let's call number, number, number 46, room 4. Open your mic. Number 6, room 4. You have two packages for $4.20. How are you going to do that in ratio? Yes. 
Yes, what is your answer? Ratio, ratio. How to do that in ratio? I show it to you like the word form, the column form, and the fraction form. So how are you going to put that into ratio? Two packages for 4.10. We can proceed to having proportion without understanding the ratio. So what is your answer? <coughs> No one is answering me. Why? Two is two. Two is two. Okay, I'll just show it to you. Maybe you are getting confused now. This is what I'm asking. <laughs> okay, that's very easy. Okay, just put it into our ratio. So we have 4 is to 8.20 and 2 is to 4.10. Okay, so 4 packages is equal to um, is to $8.20 and 2 packages for $4.10. Okay, so that is the word form. We're going to change it into a column form. Okay, answer. okay, now let's have another one. We have here 1 is to 3 is equal to 3 is to 9. How are we going to know that it is equal? So we have two parts for our proportion. We have this one. We call this the inner or the inside numbers, you call that means. Okay? Don't forget that. That is called means. Now, the numbers that it, it is outside, they are called extremes. Okay? Inside is means. Outside is extremes. Now, how are we going to do that they are proportioned to each other? That 1 is to 3 is proportioned to 3 is to 9. That uh, our, our answer should be equal. So, let's try it. How are we going to do that? We are going to multiply the numbers that is inside or the means and multiply the extreme. So 3 times 3 is 9 and 1 times 9 is 9. Now, as you can see, they are the same numbers. They are equal. That means that is proportion. Okay, now how about this one? Try to answer this. Again, multiply the means and the extremes. Let's call number room five. Oh, Jirakon. 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 Wanit. Wanit. Jirakon. Open your mic. What do you think? Is this a proportion or not? If you're going to multiply or find the product of two times three and four times one, do you think it is a a proportion, yes or no? No. No, yes. Okay, let's check if your answer is correct. That is 2 times 3 is... 2 times 3 is 6 and 1 times 4 is 4. They do not... Uh, they are not equal. That means that is not proportion. Very good. Okay, now we also have another one which is about fraction form. So for fraction form, you are going to cross multiply the, the numbers. I know the numbers that I um, used are, are actually simple to solve. I just want you to understand how to find out for proportion or not proportion. So that's why I use um, the simple numbers only. Okay, so we have one for fraction you're going to multiply, cross multiply. So one times six is equal to six and three times two is equal to six. So that means that is proportion. Now, how about this one? Okay, actually these examples are the one that I use for column. So one times four is four and two times three is six. Let's call number Mm, number eight, room eight, number 14. Room eight, number 14. Parini. What do you think? Is it 
a proportion or not? Yes, correct your right. <laughs> Pai Mu. <laughs> Canada. Canada. Room one. Room one. Oh, my sister. Your answer is just yes or no. Is it proportion or not? The answer is four and six. Oh, then we have. <laughs> Maybe in chat. So, teacher, I don't know. <laughs> 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 okay. So, the answer actually there is no. Okay, that is no. Why? Because 4 and 6 is obviously not equal. Okay, if the answer, the both answer is 6, then that is equal. So that is proportion. But if it's 4 and 6, they are not equal. So the answer is wrong. Okay, now, in each proportion, a term is missing. Now, this time, some term is missing. It can be solved using cross multiplication. So I have here an example of a cake and a flour, a cup of flour. Now, let's just say I am the baker. Okay, so me as a baker will make a cake. In order to make one cake, I need two cups of flour. So what is the ratio for that? The ratio of the cup of flour to cake is, now as you can see, the first mention there is cup of flour, okay? And two cakes. So the first one that we're going to count is the cup of flour. That is two is to one. So there is two cup of flowers and one cake. So that is how you're going to write. You have the column form and the fraction form. You can see it at, um, on the screen. Now, but I want to make three cakes. How, are, how am I going to do that? What if I'm going to have three cakes? How many cups of flour does the baker need to make three round cakes what do you think okay so sorry it's technical actually okay so we have here cups of flour is two over the number of cake is two, one okay so for a while someone is doing something on the web okay so to understand that we have the cake oh it's happening for a while Could you please stop like stop discovering the Webex because it's disrupting our class? Someone oh. Yeah, yeah, I understand. That's why stop stop um like just listen to me. Stop oh my gosh. Stop interrupting our class. Just listen, do not uh, like hold something or press something on your computer or phones. Just listen. Okay. Now, for the, um, where are we? I'm lost. <laughs> okay, for proportion, you can see there cups of flour is the numerator and the denominator is the cake. So we don't know the cups of flour for the two cakes, but we all know that we are going to make three cakes. So that is two over three. Now, how are we going to do that is we're going to cross multiply to find out the missing term. So we have that n. The n is the missing term. So we have two times three is six equals one n because that is one times n is one n. Now, how are we going to solve that further? We are going to divide that by one. So six divided by one equals one n over one. 
and so 1 over 1, and we have 6 over 1. 6 divided by 1 is equal to 6. So that is N6. The N or the missing term is 6. Therefore, we need more um, 6 cups of flour to make 3 cakes. So that is how you're going to find the proportion of this problem. Okay, so we have four more. Okay, now, for example, here we have 1 over n is equal to 4 over 12. Multiply 1 times 12 is 12, and then 4 times n is equal to 4n. Now, we are going to find out the missing term, which is n. So we are going to divide that by 4, cancel that 4 n the 4 in 4 n n over 4 so we have 12 divided by 4 the answer is 3 that means the missing term there is 3 okay now let's have this actually this the examples are very easy so let's call number 20 get ready all the 20s from room 8 room 8 Number 20 from room 8. How about this? What do you think is the missing term here? Can you still remember how are you going to multiply the means and the extremes? What do you think is the answer? Room 8. Room 8. Number 20. What is your answer? And it's one. One, okay. So let's check if your answer is correct. So that is three times three is nine, and nine times n times nine is nine n. We're going to divide it by nine, and your answer is correct. Yes, our n is one. Very good. Number twenty from room eight. You got it correct. Okay. Uh, no, the chair me room two. Oh, your room two. Oh, where is room 8, number 20? Okay, very good. Room 2, what are you? Number 42. Uh, 42. Uh, 42. Very good. Number 42 from room 2. Okay, so next we have here 32 chairs for 8 tables is equal to N chairs for 1 table. Let's call number 16 from room 6. What do you think is the numerical form of this? What is the equation to this? Number 16 from room 6. Let's see if you are really here and listening or maybe you are just playing some games there. So I'm going to call random numbers. So number 16 from room 6, please chat your answer. What is the numerical form of 32 chairs for eight tables is equal to n chairs for one table? What do you think? You can have you can have the column form or the fraction form. You can chat it here in our chat. Room 16. Uh, room 16. Number 16 from room 6. What do you think? She is not here. Oh, where is she? Is she not listening? But she's here in our um, list of participants. So maybe she's not listening. Ah, okay. I'm going to record those who sure, are. Sure, I know already. I know. I know. I know you know already. But let's call some numbers so that i will check if you are really listening to me okay let's call room room one room one number 18. room one number 18. comment or chat your answer what is the column form or the fraction form of 32 chairs for eight tables and n chairs for one table what do you think Sure, I want to go one, go one, uh, no number 45. No number 45. Where is the student that I'm calling? 
Me, I want. Who wants to answer? Me, me, me. Sure. I'm, I'm me. Me. Okay, what is your answer? Me. What is your answer? Four. 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 No, no, no. The the four. colon form, the ratio form. Not the answer, not the, the term N. You have to do it first in numerical. So that is... Four is three, two, one. 32 uh, over uh, 8 equals N over 1. Okay, so you have to say it to me first the numerical form, either the colon form or the fraction form. All right, so we have, or you can also have 32 is to 8 equals n is to 4. Okay, who wants to answer? Me. Uh, what is your answer? You show me, me. You show me. It's oh, oh, um, your answer is 4. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so your answer for n is 4. Okay, let's check if your answer is correct. Okay, so. We're going to multiply, cross multiply, that is 32 times 1 is equal to 8 times n is 8n. So the answer there is you're going to divide it by 8. 4. Okay, cancel it, the 8, and then you got a 4. Very good for those. Yes, your answer is correct. It's 4. The term there is 4. Yeah, very good for those who are listening. Oh, you, you, ah. Uh, this one is recorded, so I will know who are those students who are answering. Actually, for room one and room two, I'm very um, observing you because I'm going to record those who are participating in this line. Okay, next. Oh, this is still the same. Okay, next. 25 copies in five minutes is equal to 625 copies. That is copy, sorry. Copies in n minutes. So we have n minutes. All right, give me the fraction form or the colon form. Number, let's call number. Number 22 from room two. Chat your answer. How many minutes is that? 40 minutes? It's 40 minutes. <laughs> okay, so I only have one minute. All right. Okay, so what do you think is the answer? So I'm going to show it to you. It's 25 over 5, or 25 is to 5 is equal to 625 over n, or 60, uh, 625 is to n. So the answer to that is, what do you think is the answer? What is the answer? It is... n is equal to 125 minutes okay so basically in proportion you are just going to identify the words <laughs> the terms and then you are going to cross multiply okay this is the last one okay a fruit stall owner sells six durians for four dollars now the first question here is sally has 12 actually this is a direct proportion where the I'm not, if the item is is increasing, the other term will increase. So we have Sally has twelve dollars. How many Dorians can she buy? So we have their money is to Dorian. Our money here is the cost of the Dorian is four dollars for six Dorians. So since Sally has twelve dollars, how many could she buy? So. Think of a number that you're going to it's multiply. It's 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 okay, you're going to multiply to four to make it to twelve dollars. So we have six times three, that is eighteen durians. Okay, next one we have Sally wants to buy four to eight durians. How much money does she need? Okay, we have the ratio money is to durians. Okay, so we have four dollars is to six durians. So if you're going to buy six durians, you have four dollars. Now we don't know the dollar that we're going to pay, the money that we're going to pay, but we know that we could buy forty-eight dollars. Uh, forty-eight. Okay, what is the answer? Okay, the answer there is thirty-two dollars. Very good for those who understand 
this. Okay, so that's it for today. Okay, yes, I know it's 32 years old. Okay, so that's it for today. We have ratio and proportion. Yay! Okay, get yeah. ready. Yeah. Okay, get ready for um, the next meeting that we're going to do because maybe Teacher Mel or Teacher Joe will give you some assessment like a test. Or a class. Okay, so please study or maybe you can uh, review about ratio and proportion. So that's it for today. Thank you for listening to Teacher Shane, and I'm going. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Teacher. Thank you. See you next time. Bye. See you tomorrow.